So you don't have like millions of people recording. You know, recording equipment was kind of a specialty. Only the studios had that. Home recording was an almost impossibility, right? Uh, so live music was pretty much how a musician made a living back then. Then you get into the 70s and 80s and people could record at, record at home, uh, which is fine, but they have no way to get their, you know, their, uh, you know, they wanted to play on the radio. They literally had to drive to the radio station and deliver that reel. You know what I mean? Like, uh, which is kind of cool when you think about it, but, um, you know, it just, it, it just wasn't frequent. You know what I mean? It just wasn't something people could easily do. Then you get into the 80s and 90s and people can record on tape cassettes. But the, the audio was absolutely horrible. My first recording, uh, portable cor recording studio was a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a, port a Porta Studio 4 made by, what the hell is it, Tascam. And it was a four track recording studio and I have no, like I don't even know if I have any tapes to set where they would be or whatever within your recording gun and how, how you'd ever get to hear them <laughs> you know what I mean uh, I was able to hook it to my ghetto blaster and mix down on my ghetto blaster uh, that was the only way to mix mix down and get the song up but you really couldn't do much with that four track there was no double track guitars no double track anything it was just basically an ideas machine right and um you know, like again, the sound quality was horrible, or whatever, like that, because it was just a cheap, cheap tape cassette, right? I mean, it was enough to get ideas down, so that that, that part was fun. Uh, but until I got my, uh, you know, like the uh, BR twelve hundred, the bo the Boss BR twelve hundred that I have now, which is still a pretty cool machine, even like it's dated and it sounds and stuff like that. But you can use it, and it's got all the effects and everything a, a studio would have. It's just you know it's a, just a you know not not as good a quality right but the thing is is that you do have the abilities to put out really good songs so i put more emphasis on how good the song is going to be rather than how great a quality it's going to be at this point until i can afford to go to a studio right because i'm still building out my equipment and all that for the next probably two to three years it's probably going to take me to get everything i want and then after that look out right Like the big stuff is pretty much like the drum kit when it's paid off in, in February. I'm still going to add to it, but like I'm not going to be in debt to it. You know what I mean? So uh, that'll free up a lot of money. You know, 236 bucks a month that it's going to free up, right? Which is pretty darn good uh, to put towards other things. You know, not just musical equipment, but musical equipment and, you know what I mean? And, uh, with that, one of the other advantages I get is that uh, I could do most of it myself, but the other thing is, is it frees up money to get my, like, if I could do YouTube collaborations, okay, with other musicians, like, there's one guy, we're not in the same genre of music, but I'm thinking he's somebody that I could probably do something with, and uh, he seems to be better set up. But I'm not set up for the, the, the live streaming and stuff like that and, and whatever have you. And, uh, you know, like I need, I need to find somebody that's doing it. And, okay, how are you setting it up? Because it's like everything, all, all you need is an audio interface, and then you're good, and Cubase, and then you're good, you know, or uh, Reaper or whatever, and then you're good. And it's like, no, no. It's not that simple. <laughs> it's sort of that simple, but it's sort of not. Like, because they don't tell you all the other things that they have, you know. Like, so there is no like two hundred dollar recording studio that can produce stuff that can go on the internet e yeah, seamlessly, you know, uh, and stuff like that. You you still have to have the laptop, which I have, but you have to have one that can run the programs, right? <laughs> and I don't know if mine could. Um, if not, you're going to get glitches in your music. So this is where I do like the BR-1200 because it's, it's purpose built for that, right? It's just it's a little bit dated. But that said, when you put the uh, BR-1200 kind of an analog and just use the, uh, the 10 tracks and the, vir the 192 virtual tracks uh, in analog mode, 
uh, it's as good as whatever it is you're recording or as good as the mics you're using or as good as uh, so in that sense my, my goal would be to get musicians if I can't get gigs I'd like to do live off the floor uh, even if it's like a short like uh, session like half hour session that kind of thing live off the floor with really good audio and then sync that audio to the video uh, which I don't have the ability to do that and that's what people don't show you when they're like all you need is this and they show you like okay yeah here's the finished video here's me playing and you see all different camera angles of, of the video okay yeah now they have to sync that playing with the uh, the audio which is another program which uh, most of the time is going to be more expensive so you're, you're not you're not going to be able to produce like professional quality videos for cheap uh, so you have to be careful what you buy because you also don't want to break the bank either, right? And um, Yeah, so like it is what it is, but the other thing is is that I want to make sure that I can um, You know produce good videos and the nice thing about doing story videos is you don't have to sync the the uh, the sound to the uh, to the video So there's that plus you get to see a story. Yeah, so anyway, we'll talk about it more